Hey Cycle 1 TPAers, welcome or welcome back to TPA Cafe. This is a video that is specifically about the nuts and bolts of your Cycle 1 video annotations. So we already talked about in another video how to, or the criteria that you need to demonstrate in each of your three videos. I took you through rubrics 1.5 and 1.6, which are your two video rubrics. Um, 1.5 is, is in my mind kind of more geared toward the opener, so probably video one. Uh, rubric 1.6 is more geared toward videos two and three, but again, you can demonstrate the criteria across any of the videos. And I'm just gonna give you some specific pointers with your annotations that are very, very important. So this is from, you all have access to this. This is from your um, assessment guide. Um, this is the, this is just the multiple and single subject assessment guide, but it's, you're gonna, you're gonna see the same thing if you're a world language candidate. Um, everyone has the same, the same thing. So here's what we're going to talk about. So you have your, um, your annotations that you're going to do. And now my students, what they do typically is they write their annotations on a Word document or some, some of your universities may use a program like Edvina where you can actually put your, upload your videos and annotate them right into Edvina and then pull your annotations from there. But if you're not using a fancy a fancy program where you're annotating videos at your universities, then you can just annotate your videos, kind of write your annotations on a Word document, put your timestamps, and then when you're ready to upload those to Pearson, upload your videos and your annotations and your timestamps, you can just copy and paste them right into Pearson. I say copy and paste and not cut and paste because you do want to save your annotations just if in case you may need to, if you need to access them again because you need to resubmit your TPA or for whatever reason you do want to have access to your annotations. So just make sure to keep those in a safe place. So one thing that's really important is, and I'm going to sort of go a little bit out of order here, but in the green box, and they did this on purpose because they really want you to timestamp, not the duration of your video clip. They want you to timestamp the specific moments that these teacher moves are taking place. These instructional strategies, these teacher moves that the, the, where they're taking place in your video. So if you do a timestamp that spans your entire video, there's actually a condition code for that. And I've actually seen it more recently in the scores that have come out. A couple of students received that condition code and that's the first time that I have seen it as a, as a TPA coordinator. So I just want you to be really careful that your timestamps are, are actually mapping to where these things are taking place. So that's gonna be really important. So just make sure you, that your timestamps are, are as specific in terms of time frame as they can be, and that it's not like, you know, from minute one to minute five of your video, this thing is happening. So what you'll do when you annotate is you're gonna select an annotation title from a drop down menu, and then you'll write an annotation that is uh, no more than 1000 characters about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Again, we'll talk about how to write strong annotations in another video. This one's just going to be a short one doing the nuts and bolts. And here are your annotation titles for cycle one. So you're going to be using each of these annotation titles at least once across your three videos. That does not mean you need to use all five of these in each video. It's only once across all three. And I much like I when I talked about the video rubrics and kind of which for in my mind, which goes better with which video 1.5 is more kind of like video, the video one criteria and 1.6 is the video two and three criteria. But if you demonstrate, as long as you demonstrate the criteria in your three videos, um, you know, the CTC says that that's that's OK. I'm going to tell you the same thing for the annotation titles. So I, I personally feel and this is just me. You do not have to take my advice that creating a positive and safe learning environment and explaining connections to prior learning and establishing expectations for content specific learning. These two annotation titles, I feel can easily, easily go well with video one because they're kind of things that you would probably demonstrate in the opening of a lesson. Well, certainly you would demonstrate this. Um, I, I sure hope you would demonstrate a positive and safe learning environment as well. And, and you can easily do that in video one in my mind. Um, engaging students in content specific higher order thinking I feel like this can easily go well with video too. I also feel like this also has a assessment component in it, an informal assessment component, but I also feel like you can easily use monitoring for students' understanding of content if you also wanted to add that in. I feel like if you do two annotations per video, 
I, you only you only have to do the five. So you actually two annotations per video would be six annotations. So you don't even have to do that many. So if you did like two, one, and two, then great. But sometimes students want to kind of go a little bit more in depth. They want to add some more. And if you want to add more, I would just say to make sure that if you want to use like creating a positive and safe learning environment in all three videos, you are super welcome to do that. You just want to make sure that whatever you're choosing for your annotation title, remember it's, it's, it's quality over quantity. So if, if you think it's going to look better because you have 16 annotations in one video, I would say, ask yourself if you actually need 16 annotations, if you're actually doing, you know, that teacher move solidly 16 times, you know, I, I don't, I don't necessarily, necessarily think that we need to do you know, go nuts on, you know, the number of annotations, but I think that the quality of your annotations are going to, that's, what's going to be really important. So I feel like these two go really well with video one. Personally, I feel like this, the engaging students in content specific higher order thinking goes really well with video two. If you wanted to add this one as well, you absolutely could. And then monitoring for students understanding of content and establishing next steps for learning, uh, for students learning of content go that these two go really well with video three. Again, if you want to bounce around a little bit and you want to do positive and safe learning environment on all three videos, absolutely knock yourself out. You totally can do that. I think if you are ha having students, if you are creating positive and safe learning environment in all three videos, why not use this annotation title? But do remember that you want to map those timestamps to exactly where these are taking place in your videos. And if you're monitoring for students' understanding of content, if you're doing a check for understanding uh, in your first video, you can use this on video one. I would say that, you know, wherever you feel like they go well, they go the best, they're most in alignment with what you're doing, that's what you should do. I just personally have found that this, these really lend themselves well to video one, video two, video three, but it's up to you how you do it. Just make sure that, remember you're, that you're doing quality annotations, that you're mapping to the annotation title where that teacher move's taking place. And that it's something that they can actually, the assessor can actually see is happening in your video. It's not something where you're annotating about something that happened, that it's not in your video, but you wish it had happened or it happened after the camera turned off, but that you're actually, you're actually annotating what is taking place in your video. And that's going to, that's going to help you kind of create strong annotations right off the bat. So in another video, very soon, I'll be talking about how to actually write strong annotations and what that entails and give you a little model for that. But I hope you found this helpful for those of you that are just looking for the basics on how to write annotations and what, what the criteria is that you need to be demonstrating. And I, if you like this, please uh, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and comment down below if you found it helpful. And I'll see you all in another video.